guys have Coach Mazie here. Uh, go ahead and fire away. Hey, Coach. Yes. Yes, yeah, John Harris with the uh, Pittsburgh Tribune Review. How you doing? Hi, right, John. How are you? I'm good. Hey, I just wanted to ask you, uh, you guys have been playing really, really well. You're leading the, leading the conference right now. you got a big series this weekend with, with your old school. just kind of wanted to talk about how much that means to you, how the team is playing, and now you're going up against a school that you have so many great memories with. Yeah, you know, it's going to be really good to see everybody. You know, I got so close to those kids, and they treated my family really well. You know, my my little son was the bat boy there. He was both my kids were born in Fort Worth, and they were horn frogs their whole life prior to us coming here. And he was our bat boy, and he got really close to the players, and I got really close to the players, and coaching staff was tremendous friends of mine. And it's going to be good to see everybody. But when it comes to Playing against them, that's a little bit of a different story, you know. You you don't mind competing against your friends when you're just kind of screwing around and playing golf or cards or something like that. But when there's so much at stake and you don't want anybody to lose, that, that makes it a little bit tougher. Can you also talk about the, a lot of success that you had at TCU? You know, the, a lot of your players that you had talk about, just the, the attitude that you brought here, the confidence level that they have uh, and it's shown in the standings. Can you talk about some of those things that you brought with you from from TCU? Well, you know, you take it as a coach, you take a little bit uh, from everywhere that you've been and kind of mold your own philosophies. So I, you know, learned a lot of things at TCU and Tennessee and Georgia and East Carolina. I've been around a lot of good people and when you have your own program, you take take something from everybody and and uh, have a lot of your own philosophies and and have to run your own program. So uh, love my experience there. Uh, learned a lot, but West Virginia is it, it, its own its own entity right now. Thanks, coach. Hey, coach. This is John Antonio. You mentioned uh, you've been through this before. Is this, <laughs> is this the John Antonic? The the. Um, you mentioned you've been through this before, obviously, but how do you keep your guys grounded and keep them focused on the task at hand when you've got all these things coming up here? Well, you know, they put themselves in a position, we have, to uh, not have the luxury to take any time off or take pitches off or take at-bats off or take days off. You know, mediocre teams can do that. Uh, winning teams, uh, once you set that set that bar – then you got to live up to it, you know. So you just got to keep convincing them that that every pitch when you're in the batter's box uh, means a lot. Every pitch you throw means a lot. And every time you're on defense, you got to make every play. That's what championship t- teams do. And these guys have created this for themselves based on how hard they've worked and everything they've done. Now they've got to they've got to live up to it. You look at this TCU team. What 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 are some of the things that impress you? Obviously, pitching is a is a big part of what they do. What what do you like about them? I mean, they are they're really good. You know, they got the best pitching in the league, and you know they're very capable of shutting you out on any given day, no matter who starts or who comes in relief. So it's uh, you really have to play your best game every time. You know, to to try and scratch out a couple runs, they uh, and they're very capable offensively. They've got good hitters in the lineup from top to bottom. They're just not all having great years right now. So, in typical TCU fashion, they always swing the bats better at the end of the year than they do at the beginning. And they went out to USC last weekend and scored a lot of runs. So, uh, once their hitting catches up with their pitching, which it always does. Then, then they could potentially be the best team on our schedule. Coach, this is Bob Herzl. When, when, when you came in here and looked at Musgrave uh, at the start of the set, you know, when you first, when you first got a look at him, uh, what were the things you felt you had to do to, to get him to the stage where he is now? Uh, did you make any changes or anything? Yeah, we uh, made some uh, changes with his pitches, you know, his change up and his, his breaking ball and his mentality. Uh, had to make some changes in his in his work ethic and his energy level and his body. I mean, there were several changes we had to had to make with him. But you know, every coach 
tries to do that with players, but not every player is capable. So he's the one that deserves the credit for buying into everything that we've uh, told him and tried to teach him. And he's uh, uh, his best quality, I guess you could say, was he was a really good listener. And uh, that that has a lot to do with his success. Could you uh, could you be a little more specific in his uh, in, in the changes you might have made in 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 both his work work ethic and uh, and his pitches? I guess I, I, I guess his changeup is probably you know like like so many left-handers became a, a really important pitch to him. Yeah, you know he always threw a, a two-seam changeup and. Uh, tried to rely on it to drop out of the strike zone and people to swing and miss at it. And we we switched it to a four seam grip, in which he was a little bit stubborn at first of uh, buying into it. Uh, we just wanted him to throw it for strikes and resemble his fastball a little bit more. So he's done that, and it took a little time to develop a feel for it. But now that he's got his feel for it. Uh, it's a, it's a lot better pitch than it used to be. And work ethic wise, you just had to convince him that he wasn't doing enough, or that he had to change the way he approached things. Uh, it was just an energy thing, you know. Tell the guys all the time: if you're going to do anything that's important to you, do it with passion and energy. And uh, he would be, you know, come down to practice in the fall and not say much and just kind of walk around and. Not uh, coach and always have to pitch and coach always have to yell at him to get his work in after he threw and and now he's not that guy he knows the importance of energy and passion and work ethic so uh, you don't have to you don't have to kind of jumpstart him to do that stuff anymore he kind of realizes that it's something he has to do on his own. Got you. Thanks. Hey, Coach, it's uh, Garrett Cullen. Uh, I spoke with uh, TCU head coach Jim Sch- uh, Schlossnagel earlier today. He obviously spoke very highly of you. Uh, what, what do you take from your tenure with him, and, and what, what are your thoughts overall on him and what he's done there at TCU? That was a pretty good match, I think, he and I being together, because uh, uh, we really complimented each other well. I think the, I would say the – the one thing that I had to work on in this profession was the thing that he did the best. And I don't know if he'd say the, the opposite with me, but we complimented each other really well in the dugout, in the office, and uh, I think we made each other better. So my experience with him, he, uh, he kind of got me jump-started in the, the parts of the game that I needed to focus on. And... Uh, yeah, I think I'm a better coach because of it. Thanks, Coach. What were those things, Coach? Yeah, he's a – Coach Sloshnagel is a manager of the program. It's not uh, – it's not just on the baseball field teaching them how to hit curveballs and field backhands. It's, it's alumni. It's community. It's fundraising. It's – you know, getting to know people and and uh, presenting your program the right way in the community, and that's the kind of thing. Prior to me going there, I was all about wins and losses. What do I got to do to have a great season? But he is a manager of the entire program, and uh, that's kind of what I've tried to do here by get our alumni involved and uh, getting a lot of excitement in the community about the program. Uh, that's all stuff that that uh, he was really, really good at. Randy, this is Mike Cassaz from the Daily Mail. How are you? Hey, Mike. Um, when you were talking about the, the bits and pieces you, you took from TCU, um, would you count Stephen Trout among those? <laughs> and don't forget about Matlock now. He's, he, that's where I first met him was at TCU as well. But, yeah, I mean, uh, Stephen Trout, when he came here, when I hired Stephen, the last thing you ever want to do as a head coach is have to coach your assistants. Mm-hmm. So Stephen Trout uh, knew what I was all about. He knew how I coached. He knew how I was in the office. and It was a really, really easy transition for both of us. And uh, Coach Matlock as well. He's got TCU experience. And, and, you know, we just basically took what we all knew how to do and, 
how we all knew how to run a program and just moved it to Morgantown. You know, we didn't, we haven't done anything that I would consider rocket science. We've just done our best to, to try, try and build a quality program that strives for excellence across the board. And uh, it's more than just winning and losing games on the field. It, there's a lot more that goes into that. And those guys are uh, really helpful when it comes to that. They're good representatives of our university. And uh, it, it's nice to have those guys on board. Um, you say you picked it up and you moved it to Morgantown. You moved it to Beckley and Charleston and, you know, various corners of the state, too. Um, your, your road record is, or excuse me, your home record is, like, really deceiving because you haven't had a, a quote-unquote home, really. It's kind of been mobile all season. Um I guess that just means you're good if you're winning everywhere, but how, how is that? I mean, really without a home field advantage apart from batting last, which is important, I understand that, but um, how has that happened this year? You know, I think it's just a matter of we we have prepared our guys accordingly. You know, we it wasn't like the schedule was a surprise to us. We knew how much we were going to travel going into it. So, you know, adversity is way easier to overcome if you prepare the guys for it. So, you know, we went into this thing knowing that it was going to be a, a grind academically and being on the road and in the hotels and on the bus. And we made the decision before the season ever started how we were going to handle that. So nothing has been a real shock to us. You know, we've had, as much as we travel, we've had travel issues where we've missed connection flights and the whole team has had to spend the night and, uh, at the airport type of thing. So we got to the point where, the more adversity you could pile on top of us, the the stronger we were going to get as a team. And uh, that's what we did. And then we kind of had to flip-flop. You know, about 20 games ago, we had to flip from how to handle adversity to how to handle success because we started having some success. And that's a whole different ball game when you do that. Yeah, um, that's a pretty violent momentum swing in the middle of the season. I'm sure you're not complaining, but did you really have to sit down with them and talk to them, or did they understand that even though they are different emotions, the, the approach from day to day, that kind of is the same, isn't it? Well, no, you got to, you know, when you start you start winning, you know, we talked to them about, I think it was before the pit game, after we swept Kansas and put ourselves in a position to, uh, to do some things in this conference. Uh, but we met with them before the pit game and said, hey, you guys, uh, all credit goes to you for how you handle all the adversity we talked about, but you've done a great job doing it, but now the trick is to handle the success you're having. And you see teams all the time, and I gave them, I think, four examples of programs around the country this year that as soon as they jumped into the top 25 or the top 30, they immediately followed it up with an awful weekend where they lost two out of three games to a bad team and that type of thing. So if you get to start having success and you start listening to everybody that comes up to you and tells you how great you are and, you know, you guys are wonderful and I can't believe, you know, you guys are doing what you're doing. If you start listening to all that and getting caught up in it, then uh, that's how you – that's how you have a bad weekend uh, or lose some games. So you, you can't, you got to continue to do what you did to, that put you in the position that you're in, which is playing the game pitch to pitch and blocking out distractions and grinding out your at bats and executing pitches. And uh, if you continue to do what you did on the way up, uh, then, then you got a chance to keep moving up or stay where you're at. But if you relax at all, then then you won't be able to do that. Uh, so I gave him some examples of those teams that that happened to, and you know some other professions that you look at uh, in this world that they, just based on the nature of their business, they can't afford to take a day off. And that's you know imagine if a if a heart surgeon doesn't give 100% one day at work, or if a pilot doesn't give his all one day, you know, well, what's the result of that? Or my prime example is, a, is as a father. If you're a father, you don't, you don't have the luxury of taking a day off. You know, you're, you're a father all the time. And if you're a winning baseball program or a championship type team, you, you put yourself in this position 
Now you can't take a day off. You gotta, you gotta come every day. You gotta, every practice you gotta come prepared to get better. Every game you can't give away an at bat. Uh, you can't lose focus pitching to the number nine hitter. And once you get to that position where you've proven yourself to be a winner, that, that's how you stay there. Everyone good? Uh, I got one more, Randy, if you don't mind. Um, along those lines there, did, did the, the pick game, did it happen after the pick game? Did it happen during the pick game? Because you guys did rally pretty quickly in the middle there. But um, just that game right there, it comes right when you're talking about. And was it good for you? Did they did they kind of figure it out on their own in the middle? Did it happen after that game? Is what you were talking about sinking in? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we met with them and told them all that before the pit game. And after the pit game, uh, when we met out in left field after the game, I congratulated everybody for doing exactly what I asked them to do. Every time I've given this team a challenge, they responded. So, you know, after the pit game, we said, like we said all the time, don't get caught up in results. Just get caught up in the process. We came to that pit game with energy and enthusiasm. We played hard. We played a good game. Uh, they scored one more run than we did, but that doesn't overshadow the, the fact that coming off of a huge conference weekend, we showed up to play. So uh, I left that game feeling uh, better about our team than I did when that game started.